So here we go. I love this picture because sometimes when I try to tell somebody like, maybe we should talk about sugar, they kind of look at me like, I don't think I have a sugar problem. I don't know. It's, it's up to you to decide if you have a sugar problem, but I'm going to give you some things to think about. Do you regularly seek out sugar? Uh, you know, as it's getting closer to bedtime, you start thinking about, oh, it'd be so nice if I had something sweet or at the end of every meal, you want something sweet. Um, when you eat some sugar, you feel more like yourself, right? And um, this um, can happen to people who have very unstable blood sugar is when, where their mood kind of gets wonky and, you know, they get sugar back in themselves and, and they feel better. Um, you can't appreciate the taste of natural food and um, kale and some of these foods don't actually sound appealing to you. It may be because your taste buds are so overloaded that they just can't appreciate the taste of natural foods. Do you guys all know what hangry is? It's when you're hungry and angry. So um, this can happen close to the timing of your next meal. So, you know, all of a sudden you feel like, okay, I feel irritable. Some people can get break out into a sweat, have palpitations or fast heart rate, um, get anxious even. And as soon as they eat, they feel good again. That's a pretty good sign that you have unstable blood sugars. And the, the fix to that isn't more sugar. The fix to that is getting rid of sugar and then adding in protein and good fats into the diet. Um, how about this one? I know many of us struggle with this one. You have trouble either falling asleep or staying asleep or both, right? Um, some of this may have to do actually with how cortisol hormone is um, changing throughout the night. And sugar, remember, spikes your cortisol. So if you're eating sugar close to bedtime, it's possible that you're spiking your cortisol, uh, you know, a little bit too early at three, four in the morning, and you're getting that early morning awakening. Of course, there's many other reasons for these sleep problems, stress being um, right up there with sugar. Um, frequent infections because you're feeding all the bacteria and yeast, but this can actually manifest as chronic nasal or sinus problems. Um, spastic colon, which some people kind of think of as irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, but it could just be bloating, pain, crampiness. Um, oftentimes these can be due to yeast and um, overgrowth. And of course, um, fatigue is something that people with a lot of sugar in their diet can experience because they keep crashing after the sugar wears off. Mood changes, anxiety, depression, and difficulty concentrating brain fog. I know there's a lot of non-specific things on this page, but when you kind of get into the world of integrative and functional medicine, you'll see like everything affects everything. And sometimes you have to do a little bit of experimentation before you can tease it all out. But I would say, it's, it's unusual for fatigue to be caused only by sugar consumption. The, it, everything is multifactorial. There's multiple things that feed into a symptom or a diagnosis. So I want us to stop really thinking about things in very simplistic terms, right? I'm, I'm sure you've all gotten um, emails forwarded to you. Okay, mercury is the cause of MS. Well, it's one of the contributing factors. It's not the thing that, you know, does you in. So um, I want you to imagine a different way of moving throughout your day. This is the perfect time to do it because it's the beginning of the year. Maybe you have a new year's resolution and I'd love for this to be the year that you actually make those changes and become that person that you've always sort of envisioned yourself to be. So can you start eating differently and could you actually enjoy those foods? It's very, very possible. Is it possible to not be hungry and hangry all the time, right? Yes. Uh, if we could stabilize blood sugars, that is very much possible. Could you feel more energized? Can your brain work better where you can concentrate more and you don't you know, get rid of the, the cobwebs, the brain fog that plagues a lot of us? Um, can your pain actually be less? Can your mood be better, less anxiety? Uh, what if you could get deeper, longer, more restorative sleep? If there's one, if I had to pick one lifestyle habit, that's my favorite, it would be sleep. 
hands down, even over nutrition, because it's when our bodies repair. And if we're not getting good sleep, we're just not giving our body the repair that it needs. Very hard to start healing. So cutting out sugar can help with improving sleep, improving weight loss. So these are, I want you to start thinking about and just imagining that a very different person in three weeks, maybe even less, because some of these um, changes Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you could still hear me? Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, uh, I want you to just open your heart and mind to a day for you. It's possible for all of us, no matter where we are on that spectrum between perfect health, we can all move towards better health, 100% guaranteed. So some questions to ask yourself, is sugar moving you towards better health? I mean, I know that's an easy one to answer, but think about what are all the different ways you're derailing yourself for that um, um, joy that comes with eating sugar. When thinking about cutting down sugar, we have to think about why is this important now? You know, why would we put the time and effort into making this change now? I want you to think about, you know, is this the right time for you to commit to yourself, right? Time is brain. The sooner we start working on cutting sugar down and working on other lifestyle habits, the better progress and the greater success we're going to have. I want you to think about choosing a realistic goal, right? It's not realistic to say, I'm going to stop eating sugar 100% for the next month. I just don't think that's that's how most of us are wired. So I want you to always think about, is your goal realistic? And then you got to tell others so that you stay accountable. It's a lot harder to kind of let yourself down when you've already told other people you're working on this. And part of what we do in our MS community with True Medicine is we're working with on goals all the time. So people know what we're working on. They're you know checking on us and we're checking on other people. Um, you know, it really helps to have another friend or family member doing this with you. So find someone else who would be interested and do it together. And then you got to prepare your house. Like just get the stuff out that you don't want to eat because, you know, why, why temp tempt yourself, right? Uh, in our house, we rarely keep sugar and um, ice cream. I make it really hard and expensive. You know, yes, we can have it when we're out, but it's not the thing we do every day. So make sure you also have healthy foods that you enjoy, because I think anytime you take something pleasurable away from people, you have to replace it with something else. Otherwise we'd all be pretty cranky. And then here's my big um, disclaimer. If you have diabetes, prediabetes, unstable blood sugars, low blood sugars, or you're on medications or supplements to lower blood sugar, please talk to your doctor before all of a sudden cutting sugar down because all of a sudden your sugars can just tank and you will have a really bad outcome. In fact, it could be very fatal and low blood sugars can kill you over the course of a few minutes. So I want you to always be careful and err on the side of caution. I don't like drastic rapid changes. I like slow sustained changes. That's how habit change happens. Okay, so we're gonna retrain those taste buds. Uh, mindset is super important. You have to believe that this is possible. If you get sugar out, your, your taste buds will come back. Um, believe in the fact that change is possible. 100%. I see this all the time. Sometimes it takes people a while to kind of buy in, but once they do, and they see, they have a small win up front, um, they keep wanting to add on to all the small little changes that they've made just takes about three to four weeks to um, start enjoying the taste of natural foods. Oh, and I should tell you the first two to three weeks are hard. You will probably be cranky, moody. Your sleep might be not the, not the best. You're, you might be fatigued, but it does get easier for sure.